All right. So again, these notes come from that wonderful lady, Renee McCormick, the one that's y'all in Texas and all that good stuff. So what's a buffer? Like in real life, like, have you heard of the word buffer? Not in chemistry land, but just in the world. Okay, so it prevents it from doing something, right? Okay. It, it kind of makes things easier. So like if you've got two warring nations, so you've got nation one and nation two, sometimes they'll have like a buffer zone here where they just don't go. They don't end up going in that area, kind of like North and South Korea. There's that, that line there and they've just kind of said, hey, we're not gonna go here. This is a buffer zone. It, it resists change, okay? So when your computer is buffering, it's resisting change, change that you want to actually happen, but it's resisting that change. And usually because you've run out of memory or something. Um, but a buffer is something that's going to resist change. And that's, that's what we're going to do here is we're re going to resist stark changes in our pH. Okay. And we're going to do it by using typically an acid and its conjugate base. And I'm going to show you how that works today or start to at least. Okay. So like I said, a buffer is going to be, it's going to use the case of that common ion effect, which a few of you forgot on your unit seven test again. It is a solution of a weak acid or a weak base and it's salt, essentially it's conjugate. Okay. So what would that look like? So a weak acid, well, let's just take our HF from yesterday that we, were, we talked about on the board, okay? So this is my weak acid. This is its conjugate base, and then it's made H3O plus over here. This hydrogen was donated to the water. This is the conjugate, conjugate, base here. And this is my weak acid. It has to be a weak acid though. Okay. Or it has to be a weak base. It can't be strong. We'll talk about situations with strong coming up. <clears throat> okay. So since a buffer consists of both an acid or a base and it's conjugate, an acid and a base are present in all buffer solutions. If a small amount of a strong acid is added, there's a base component there that's going to neutralize it, take it out. And that's going to prevent your pH from changing drastically from the addition of that strong acid or base. Your body consists of so many buffers. Your body is essentially just a buffer system after a buffer system after a buffer system. In your body, you have something called homeostasis. All animals do, right? You've heard of that. That homeostasis is primarily taken care of by buffers. So if you are going on to any more upper level biology, any kind of med kind of stuff, buffers are huge, okay? Because they're gonna prevent your body from getting too out of whack one way or the other, okay? So a few things that you need to be proficient at, okay? You need to be proficient at knowing what your conjugate acid bases are. So can you identify from looking at a problem like this, that this is a weak acid because it's not one of the six that you had to memorize, right? And then on the other side, that this is its conjugate. Can you make that pairing? You guys can do that. Yeah. Okay. Can you figure out pH 
and that that is the negative log of H concentration. Can you also take 10 to the negative pH and get that hydrogen concentration? You should be comfortable doing that. Ka times Kb gives you Kw. So if you know Kw, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius, if you know this and you know one of these other two, you can solve for the one that you don't know. Yes? You can do that, okay? We will get into titrations we're not there yet, okay? So the key to formulas is, or to buffers, is the formula that I have. I have it printed on your sheet, right? Isn't there? Okay. Apparently it didn't make it onto here. I think it's pH equals pKa mm -hmm. plus yep. the log mm -hmm. of the acid, uh, the base, Molarity divided by the acid. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a trick with this as far as molarities are concerned. Okay. I'm going to show you that when we get into a problem here. You also need to know this. This is absolutely critical that moles are going to equal the molarity times your volume in liters. Yes, it has to be in liters in order for this formula to work. And it has to be in liters because your molarity is moles per liter. And you want to cancel that liter out to be able to get back to moles because you're solving for moles here. I'm going to put all this stuff together. Just hang with me. Okay, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. All right. We'll get back into this concept of, of this guy later too when we get into titrations. We're not going to worry about that right now too much. Okay. So let's start here. We have formic acid. I don't know what formic is. Do you know what formic is? Does it matter? Because what are we going to use to represent formic? An A, yeah. So we're going to go formic acid because that's our anion. And then we don't have to look that up and be worried about it. Okay. We're going to put that in some water. And it's going to form A minus, which is whatever that polyatomic ion is. And it's going to give us some H plus coming out. Right? Everybody with me there? All right. Before I start here, I need to figure out my values. So they're telling me that I'm starting out with 0.5 of this. And I'm starting out with 0.7 molar sodium formate. Now, what do we know about the sodium when that gets in there? Right, it's going to be an ion. So assuming that this formate, whatever it is, I guess I can look at it. I know it's a minus one ion. I got fluorate. I don't know what formate is. I guess I should prove to you that that is a plus or a minus one ion. Come on. Valentine's is over. Okay. So it's the HCO2 minus ion. There we go. We're back to here. HCO2 minus. That's formate. Okay. 
So the this guy would have been H2CO with nothing, okay? But this is a minus one ion, so we know that it's going to be in a one-to-one. -one. So sodium formate would have been NaHCO2, okay? So for every one of these whole things, I'm going to have one of these come off, okay? So if my molarity of this was 0.7 of the whole thing, my molarity of just the HCO2 minus is going to still be 0.7. Good? Everybody okay with that so far? Okay. So when I'm starting out here, before I've added anything in, I'm going to use that formula that I wrote up here for you guys that you should have written in, which is pH equals pKa. How do I get pKa if I'm given Ka? How do I get the P of anything? Negative log. Negative log. Yep. So I'm going to take the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Negative log of 1.8 negative 4. I ended up with 3.74. Yes? That shouldn't be pH. That should be pK. Oh, yeah. No, we are figuring out the pH. pH equals pKa. So the pKa is 3.74. Okay. Plus the log of my base concentration, which we said was 0.7, divided by the molarity of my acid. 0.7 divided by 0.5. I'm going to take the log of that and I'm going to add that value to 3.74. And you end up with a pH before we've done anything of 3.89 because they asked us to figure out before. Everybody hanging with me. Okay, so let's say I'm going to erase this for just a second, okay? I want to talk to you about something, okay? I'm going to write it back. It's going to be okay. What is the unit for molarity? Big M, what does big M represent? How do we get it? Okay, so if I have 0.7 here, that would be 0.7 moles over one liter, yes? Down here, I would have 0.5 moles over one liter. When I go and divide these, since they're in the same container, they have the same volume, what's going to happen to those liters? They'll cancel, They'll cancel out. So truthfully, we can just solve this in moles instead of molarity. You see why? Because the volume is going to cancel out. The volume's all together there. So we can just cancel that volume out between those two things. Now, why is that important? Well, when we start putting in one of these invaders, we need to be using moles in this part of the equation instead. Okay? 
And you have to ask yourself, when I bring this H plus in here, what part of this is it going to affect? This H plus comes in, is it going to add to this and become H A or H two A plus? Or is it going to grab a hold of this and make some H A? Yes, it's going to grab a hold of this. So it's going to take some of this out, right? And add it over here. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to get everything in moles into this equation in order to solve for it. Okay. So I'm going to start here. I've got my formic acid. I have 0.5 liters of this formic acid. I need to get that into moles right here. So 0.5 times 0.5 is what? 0.25, yep, okay. So this is going to be point, oops, I'm on the wrong line, 0.25 moles of my HA. I'm gonna have how much on the top? How many moles of the formate? ion. Again, I've got this many liters. It's all together. 0.35. Now, if you were to run this problem again the way we did, guess what your answer to pH would be? The same. Yep, because our volume would have just divided out. Our molarity would have divided out. So we can keep this in moles. It's okay to have this stuff in moles. Even though the formula reads molarity, they're in the same container, so they have the same volume. Okay? So just do this as moles the first time round, and then it's easy. Okay? And I just needed to prove that to you so that you would believe me. Okay? Now... We are going to figure out, we just talked about what this would attack. It's going to attack this, and it's going to take some of this, this H plus is going to take some of this away, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to grab that A minus, so our HCl is going to come in. Let me just put down Cl here so you can remember that that's where that came from. Our HCl is going to come in. Our chlorine is still going to remain an ion. We don't care about that at all. Okay. But some of that H plus is coming in from here. And it's going to grab a hold of that A minus. And it's going to form more HA. Should that be double A or a single A? Probably a double. Wouldn't it be single because it's strong? Yeah, it is HCl that's coming in. The hydrogen's coming in, and it's going to make this HA, though. So the HA would, since it's, that's a weak acid. It's not really that big a deal, okay? So don't, don't get bogged down in that, okay? What I want you to do, though, is I want you to figure out the moles of this that are coming in. Okay, so we have 10 mils. 10 mils, we got to convert that into liters. And then multiply it by one. So how many moles of this are invading? 0 0.01. And it's taking away from the base. So we are going to subtract 0 0.01 from here. And it's making this stuff. Right? The H is coming in, grabbing this, and making some of this. So we're going to 
add 0 0.01 to the acid part. So we run through our equation. pH equals 3.74 plus the log of 0 0.34 over 0 0.26. All right. Hmm. 0.01, yeah. 0.25 plus 0.01 is 0.26, right? Did I do my math right? Make sure I'm doing my math right. I think I am. I got you math geniuses out there. You're supposed to be double checking me. I'm good. Okay. All right. So you run this through and what do you get for your pH? Uh, somebody took away her answers down here that you guys used to have. Three point eight six, very good. Okay. So our buffer solution, we had calculated that originally as three point eight nine. Okay, before we added anything in. We added in an acid to this. So if we add an acid in, what do we expect to happen to our pH? It should get lower. Did it get lower? Yeah. Always go back and do that confirmation check. Did it get lower by a lot? No. no. Okay. So if it did, that means that the buffer was still working. And the buffer is going to continue to work until you run out of moles of one of these two things. When you run out of moles of one of these two things, it is going to go way up if you added a base or way down if you added an acid. It's going to swing dramatically. Okay. But as long as you still have some of that buffering ability, which they call buffer capacity, as long as you have that buffer capacity available, meaning you've still got stuff here to add and subtract from, then you're good. Now, yeah. So is the buffer just like the, um, just the formic acid in sodium formate? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's the weak acid and it's conjugate base. So that's why when you run out of one of those, it would be. Then it's going to go one way or the other wildly. Okay. That would be the same for like a weak base. Yep. Yep. Are you wrapping around? Are you okay? Do you want me to run through the same problem again with you or do you want me to do a different one? Okay. All right. What is a ratio? Hmm? Yep, we've set two things. It's it's like a you're comparing two separate things, okay? So you've got your ratio of your weak acid and base, right? And we, we do, um, she does acid and base, we do base and acid. And we do base and acid, okay, because that's what's on your sheet here, okay? There's two ways to do this. There's her way. Her way is no. Ah, I can't even remember her way anymore. To be honest with you. Yeah. Ka. Yeah. 
Um, hers is just Ka and then acid over base. Okay, so that's her way. It's a little simpler because you have the log, but you end up having to do the log on this side to get the pH anyway. So it's really not that big a deal where it's at. Okay, but I, I'm trying this year, and I've always done it her way. So if you find me flopping back, let me know. Um, I'm trying to flip the other way so that you don't have to memorize an extra formula. You can just use the one off of here. That being said, my answer keys are still in her old method. So just be aware of that until I can get them converted over. Another thing on my plate right now that I'm trying to get done. All right, so we've got acetic acid. Remember acetic acid? We can do acetic acid is actually, okay, and then the acetate is this guy. Okay, they want to know what ratio of acid to conjugate base will you need to maintain a pH at 5. They've given us a Ka value here. Okay. So Ka, if I do the negative log of 1.8 to the negative 5, that's going to give me a K, pKa. This is pKa of 4.74. Okay. So I want a pH of 5. 5 equals 4.74 times the log of x. We're solving for x. Right? Because we want that ratio. Yep. Yeah, told you forget stuff. Good call. All right. And so I am going to subtract this over. So that leaves me with 0 0.26, I believe, equals the log of x. Now math geniuses, how do I get myself out of this conundrum? Okay, so e... You speak in foreign language over there, Andrew. How do I get out of this conundrum? It'd be 10 to the power of 0. 0.26. What? 10 to the power of 0. 0.26. Yep, that works. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I was like, I don't think that's right. So 10 to the power of 0. 0.26 is going to give me X. And X equals 1.82. So that means that I need 1.82 molar A minus, because that's on top, right? Remember our ratios for this problem. This X here is our molarity of A minus over our molarity of HA. So if this is 1.82, then our A, HA molarity is going to equal what? 1. Yeah. Because this is 1. Our answer came out to 1.82. So 1.82 over 1 is the same value. So that means that this is going to be 1 and this would be. So if we wanted to prepare a um, buffer, that had a pH of 5, we would need to add in a 
1.82 molar moles molar solution of sodium acetate and then we would need a solution that's one molar of RHA. If I didn't give you homework tonight, would you be upset? No. no. Okay. We are going to pick up here tomorrow then. Okay. Was today too bad? You can handle today.